conservation, restoration, development, and management of natural resources in Ontario, watersheds in Ontario. So that's a very broad mandate. But it has embedded right into the purpose of the Act programs and services. And those are words that are going to carry through this presentation. So the Act goes on to start to scope those. And, and this slide here in your presentation deck starts to tell, you know, conservation authorities, whoa, hold the bus, you're not, you know, you're not God, right? You, <laughs> you don't get all authority over all natural resources. This is the scope of services. And then now the new legislation, they've said, okay, and we're going to categorize these services. Category one, we have to deliver. Our legislation says we have to deliver these services. And there are things like our dam operations. Uh, we own and operate over 15 dams. Um, the water quality monitoring that we do on behalf of the MNRF. And then they say there's this category two where some, and not uh, Greater Madawaska, but some municipalities have actually retained us to do things that you are obligated to do under the Municipal Act or Provincial Policy. So for instance, in the County of Lanark, we have a bilateral agreement and we provide pl planning support to all the municipalities within the County of Lanark. So that would be an example. We also run septic inspection programs or permitting programs. So that's where we'd have bilateral agreements with those municipalities. But the category three is an area where we do, um, where your services currently support uh, the work that we do. And they're considered, uh, um, the term in the legislation is advisable. They're things that the Conservation Authority recommends to its board and to its municipalities that are carried out, and, uh, but are not mandatory uh, either to the CAs or to the municipalities. So the common word people say is optional. So um, my objective is, with all of the municipalities, is to enter into either a memorandum of understanding for Category 2. So if there's anything on the list you see and interests you, we can always talk about those. Um, and enter into what they're calling cost apportionment agreements for everything that's in Category 3. So that's, in essence, what the province has told us we have to do. So now I'll talk to you about the implication this has on our annual budget and the, the uh, invoice we send to the township every year. So the mandatory are, are going to stay on the levy um, because we have to deliver them. The category two, we would probably add just a special line item that says, and this is for Greater Madawaska or whomever we're doing that service for. And you'll see this when I pull up a spreadsheet later. And then the category three, they would be apportioned to all the municipalities that participate. So if all 11 municipalities participate, then you're going to pay the equivalent share that you are today. Okay, so why am I here right now? Because these don't take effect till 2024, okay? But as you know, there's a municipal, a municipal election between now and then, and budgets have a cycle. So though it's spring or almost summer tomorrow of uh, 2022, by August, mid-August of this year, this council and all the other councils that I'm engaging with become lame duck, depending on how, who's running again, et cetera, right? So we have this window where we can engage in this conversation and then really affect I can't talk to council again until it's reconvened in its new form. And I don't know whether there's going to be any changes, but there would be sort of a transition period. So realistically, for me to come back to this council and engage in this kind of conversation, it's not till next February or March. And that then leaves us very little time to develop our budget, you know, because we have to get the agreements of all the 11 municipalities. So that's why I'm here before you today, because I'm looking to just get an indication from you about what you're supportive of. And then if you are in supportive of those, at least to give me the direction to work with your CAO so we can keep the process going during this whole election season. Okay. So programs and services inventory, we were mandated to develop a long list of everything we do and then to categorize that. And that was shared with you uh, in February, the deadline to share that with all our member municipalities in February. So you may have seen that. And we used our current budget to help just identify that. So you'll see this here. So everything in that second column that's very colorful, everything that's green is category one. So you can see the vast majority of things that we do 
are category one. We have to continue doing them because they're part of our core mandate. The uh, blue line is a category three. Now I'm gonna put on my glasses here so I can read what this one is. So this is monitoring. We do monitoring across the watershed, and this is monitoring that's not mandatory, either by the, under the CEA Act or uh, a bilateral agreement. The two orange ones are uh, bilateral agreements that I mentioned earlier that we have with the County of Lanark and the City of Ottawa, and that's for planning reviews and septic approvals. Similarly, on to this next page, uh, most of it's category uh, one, but when you see all these blues down below, those are all category threes, and that's the crux of what I want to just review with you today, is those category threes so that you know what these optional programs are that I'm asking you to consider funding on a go-forward basis. So just to uh, recap, um, our annual levy in 2022 was $3.375 million, and the levy to this municipality was 1185 So in the scheme of things, the, you know, because of your jurisdiction and the, the way that this is calculated, the contribution to our overall budget isn't that significant to begin with. But I'm here because you, you are one of our member municipalities, and your sentiment carries a lot of weight in that what I'm looking for is all 11 municipalities, if possible, to say that these things are important, regardless of the dollar value. Because you'll see subsequently that the actual dollar value to this municipality is probably less than what I'm paying in mileage to get up here. But I wanted to engage in this conversation with you because I think it's an important conversation that we need to be having. So the category two, I'm not going to belabor that. These are the different types of supports we can provide to planning departments and on the septic side and also in support of the Clean Water Act. But because you're outside of CA jurisdictions for the bulk of your municipality, I don't think this applies to you, but I'd have to confirm that. So really what it comes down to in terms of the category three are stewardship programs. This is where we engage with landowners on helping them to you know, manage uh, their, the use of water on their property, to buffer strips uh, where you know, there's been a lot of degradation of shorelines. Um, system monitoring where we're trying to assess lake quality you know, and, and track how the quality of our lakes and, and rivers are evolving over time. Uh, non-passive activities at conservation areas. And the reason why it says non-passive is because passive recreational are funded and are category one. The non-passive ones I'm gonna outline to you. And then any sort of public education programs. So um, I'm just gonna talk very briefly about our stewardship plan. This was a significant piece of work that we did earlier this year. Um, and we divided our jurisdiction into three areas, and this area is part of um, the upper, uh, upper watershed. And we tried to target different st st um, stewardship programs based upon the nature of the area. So, you know, as I was driving here from Carlton Place, first of all, it's gorgeous. <laughs> you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful drive up the number 9 and 511. And you have a lot of natural resources that are still in relatively pristine uh, condition as compared to just down the road in Lanark County where you know it's a huge amount of urban development and agricultural development and you, they've lost most of their forest cover. This is a very different jurisdiction. So the type of things that we're looking at doing with communities in this kind of area is engaging with lake stewards on doing local lake monitoring and maybe enhancing the type of monitoring programs that we're able to deliver by engaging with lake stewards and the like. So, um, you know, that this, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but I just wanted to give you a sense of what specifically we might do within this jurisdiction. Um, our system monitoring program generally looks at a whole host of uh, water quality, uh, as well as indicators of ecosystem health. So we do some in, uh, indicator species to indi you know, get a sense of what the health of the ecosystem is. And then you can see across the watershed, uh, this is our jurisdiction, right from Addington Highlands down to the city of Ottawa. And you can see in that little quadrant there, 
the small percentage of Greater Madawaska that's within our jurisdiction, but you can see we have monitoring stations within the township. So at the passive uh, recreational uh, activities at our conservation areas are, this is uh, examples from our Millican Tail, which is just outside of Almont. And uh, so, you know, we host weddings, but largely on a cost recovery basis. Um, we rent out our gatehouse, which uh, is an, a historical building, again, on a cost recovery basis. We operate an education center. Now, during COVID, we had to suspend our education programs. But uh, again, we, um, you know, it's engaging with children often who, quite frankly, don't have access to the nature that you guys do here. That's the reality of it. Uh, and, and then we also operate a museum. So getting to the punchline, the category two um, are, are largely cost recovery, and either you're signing up for them or you're not. And the category three across all of our jurisdiction is roughly $126,000 that is paid from the levy as opposed to other sources like grants and the like. And, oh, it says Carleton Place, but, uh, oh, okay, well, somehow I sent you an earlier version. This one should read Greater Madawaska, and instead of 2.42, it's 0 0.0351, if memory serves me correctly. And the dollar value is 40. So, $40. So the whole kit and caboodle for $40. So I'm very hopeful that, that you can be supportive of this because the cost to the township is not that significant and it would allow us to continue to deliver the programs. This isn't an additional 40. This is the 40 that you're already paying under the current legislative regime. I'm just saying as we transition to the new regulatory regime, could you continue to pay what has been historically an average of $40. So, the next steps is for you to confirm as a council whether you can support uh, the continuation of the Category 3, and if so, to direct staff to enter into an agreement for the sake of $40. We have to do this. That's what the province requires uh, <laughs> to continue those Category 3. And uh, I have a draft resolution here, but I'm guessing you may or may not be in a position to adopt it tonight. I don't know what your rules are, but uh, happy to work with the township uh, on an ongoing basis on this. So thank you very much. Thank you, well, thank you, very, much. Thank you very much, Sally. Uh, I'll open it up in case there's questions of council. Seeing none, um, one question I have is, we had talked when you, when we met the first time, and it was when we were going through the flooding, uh, that perhaps uh, mapping would be uh, entertained. Was that ever uh, discussed? And it's not part of this, I see, so. So that would be a category two. Uh, so we have a bilateral agreement with the city of Ottawa to do accelerated mapping. Like we're, we can only do mapping as budget allows, but if any one of our municipalities provides us with additional funds, because we only have so many people, so it would allow us to retain, you know, maybe an engineer for half a year to work with our director to do that mapping. So it's definitely something we can do, and we do it at cost, obviously. We're not a consulting firm. So we've been able to produce a lot of excellent mapping for the city of Ottawa on an accelerated basis in accordance with their spending plan. So is there any way that uh, um, a cost could be put together, you know, so that we could look at it at a budget time? Absolutely. Um, so uh, Luke and I had conversations around that time, and it's we sort of delineated in a general sense the areas of mm -hmm. interest. I think we'd need to nail those down. And, uh, and maybe we can work with Luke on coming up with a very defined scope, because of course, if I'm gonna price it, I wanna know exactly, and you wanna know exactly, right? So if you give direction, then Luke and I could work on that together and get back to you. Well, I think it certainly uh, would be advantageous. I know when we went through the flooding, especially up in the Griffith area, we were 
as the water was uh, raising, we were very, very, very concerned, but didn't know which areas to be addressing first. So having mapping, especially for our little lying areas, so we segmented it, and depending on the cost, look at it, you know, over a few years uh, might be the way to, to do so. If you could work, work with staff on that, that'd be great. If I could just comment, so one of the key first steps is good data. So uh, we just flew uh, the entirety of the watershed the past year. So we have data for what flows into the Mississippi. I don't know what kind of data you have that flows into the Madawaska. Um, but the CAs are carrying on this work. It's a multi-year uh, we're flying the townships to get LIDAR data, mm -hmm. which is the best of the best. Um, so if you're interested, in, depending on what kind of data you have today, we may be able to tie you into that initiative and just make sure you're getting the flight data first, and then, well, not flight data, but, you know, the, yeah. and, uh, and then, you know, maybe phase it over a period of years, as you suggest. First the data collection, data cleaning, development of the model, and then the mapping. So is there another conservation authority that, hand, not our township, but handles other parts of Renfrew County? Not that I'm aware of. I so think we're, we're just it. So we're kind of the kip uh, yeah. of this one. Yeah. Yeah, the so next the, one over would be Quinty. I know it sounds like Quinty, you think Quinty. But uh, Quinty, because we go as far as Bon Echo Park and, and uh, north into the Highlands. Well, perhaps so. uh, if we could have the discussion, if it's not possible well then we know that but uh, if it is it might be a, something yeah. we would want happy thank to you. explore it okay thank you great nothing further then thank you very much for coming out tonight thank you so i think uh, i think we'll uh, um, read the motion and uh, council can vote on it now so uh, be it resolved that the township council support Continued delivery of Category 2 and 3 programs by Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority and direct township staff to work with MVCA staff on a memorandum of understanding and cost apportionment agreement development to be presented to Council in early 2023. Moved by Councillor Regelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson. The Council. That's the same. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you very much. There, oh, we spent $40. Thank you. Are you going to speak to uh, Ferguson? Uh, right. Okay. Right. Well, we'll see. So uh, Public Works uh, monthly progress report on reconstruction of Ferguson Lake. So the information is, is in the package, uh, perhaps just for anyone viewing, you, you could do a little overview of it, Allison. Um, so the project is well underway if anyone's been in the, the project is well underway for anyone who has been in that area. Um, uh, we seem to, there, we're still on schedule and you know, there's a few change orders that have come through, but there's nothing of any significance at this time. Okay, questions of council? And 5062 is the capital works plan, which is in your package, so that's moving along. And, and uh, Steve, I think uh, we're looking at putting the gravel on a couple of roads that are going to be service treated in the next short period. Yeah, so hopefully Wednesday, we're going to start putting gravel on Roseboro and then we'll move the partridge and maple and in the meantime the the shovel should be moved out to pucker street and start ditching out there culverts okay thank you in canada day uh temporary closure of matawaska street is an information item is there any questions of council seeing none 5064, moved by Councillor Regelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson, that Council approves policy 606, declaration, declaring a significant weather event as presented. Steve, would you like to speak to that? So this was just 
so if we declare a severe weather event, if it snows or uh, major rain, that I can declare it. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, cut out there. <laughs> So are you declaring a significant weather event? Uh, uh, so what does does that give you? It just gives us more time to get out and make the minimum maintenance standards. If we know it can't be met, we can, uh, it gives us more time to get it. Okay. And I guess one of the big things, the county has been doing this over a period of time is it's very informative to the people. Uh, you know, the ratepayers and visitors to our township that uh, the roads are n uh, not in good shape. So, uh, so uh, the resolution uh, that, uh, oh, sorry, Councillor McPherson. So is this something, something new that's just come into effect? I know that uh, we've had discussions about significant weather events in the past, but uh, this particular um, policy is it something that we'll put in place, like if we, we vote on it now, it's it's until it gets rescinded or does it have to be done every year or what's the... Uh... So once it's in place, it's in place. It's just setting out the parameters of how it will be communicated and executed. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? So moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson, and Council approves bylaw 606 declaring a significant weather event as presented. All in favor? Carried. Five oh six five sole sourcing of a tandem dump truck. Uh, Steve, do you want to speak to that? So uh, we've been kind of in and out on this. Uh, we decided to put a tender out for a tandem dump truck, and nobody had put in for it. Um, and when I contacted the truck centers. Um, they said because we took 2023 on the tender, there is no 2023s left and they already almost have all the 2024 sold. So that is a reason why nobody's put in for the, the truck and we kind of think it's uh, not really worth our while to put one out to get a truck in three years from now as of right now. So we're just going to stay maybe looking for a used truck as of right now and, and see what we can come up with. So this uh, gives you the authority that if you find one to move on it to sole source and, and move because they don't last long, correct? That's great. Yes. Question? So that's not a... Council Perry. Just a, a question, Steve. It's, the sole sourcing is based on the fact that you can't have anything before 2023, 2024, correct? I'm just looking yes. for the basis on which we're sole sourcing. So we were trying to... So this source is for the use up to $100,000. Um, so we were trying to put a, an RFP out to get bids on a new one, um, but we didn't get anything because the, the bid was for, uh, included the year of 2023 and they're all sold. So the sole source is only for a used one with a, a <coughs> maximum budget of $100,000. Okay. Thank you. okay. And 5066, tender for winter sand. I'll read the uh, resolution. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson. The Council award tender 09-2022 winter sand to RJ Sell and Son in the amount of $48,985.50, HSD included, for the Dacre and Mattawachan locations. Questions of Council? Councillor McPherson. So Steve, how does this compare to last year with, with everything rising in cost now? Uh, are you starting to see uh, significant increases on uh, on tenders like this? It, it wasn't really uh, as crazy as I thought it was going to be. Um, last year, it's sure it's around $13 a ton and it was just over 14. So I didn't think it was anything too crazy. So, um, mm -hmm. The reason we didn't have many tenders is uh, we didn't need sand in the Calabogie yard this year because we cleaned up the yard and filled the new sand shed. So um, this is one of the people that do it in the area. Thank you. 
Anything further? All in favor? And that's carried. And environmental um, sustained technologies. So this was the uh, um, document that was sent out to council to uh, see it. We had technical difficulties the night of, so it was sent and uh, I presume everybody has reviewed it. Is there any questions on that? Councillor Perry. So who on staff is responsible for this baby? So this is an endeavor from McNabb Brayside. Okay. So this is a project that they're undertaking um, with to see, and they asked that we share it with council to see, okay. you know, share the information. Uh, I expect there will be more forthcoming. Yeah. Um, Councillor or Mayor Peckett was asked to come and speak to it, so if we can ask again if council would like. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, and in speaking with Mayor Peckett. Uh, yeah. He said a new memorandum of understanding is going to be drawn up. Um, I don't fully understand, though, how we can sign a memorandum of understanding unless we have prices in it. And at this point, there is no prices. He was suggesting to me that uh, it was allowing us a spot, you know, if they move to this. Sounds like it would be uh, cost effective for the township, you know, if they do go to it, but they need to get. Uh, pretty well all of Renfrew County and Lanark. They were hoping to get maybe parts of the city of Ottawa. So it needs a quite a volume, I think 200 metric tons per day uh, to come in. Uh, so anyway, we'll be getting more information coming. And after reviewing that, if uh, any councillor would like uh, uh, Mayor Peckett to, to come and, and speak to to us about it, well, we, he's certainly willing to do that, and that might be the thing with the new memorandum of understanding. Seven o six one. Well, this is a big one. Annual emergency exercise exemption. Before I read this, Allison. Have we not been granted the exemption as we've gone through these emergencies previously? So we have on occasion. Um, the flood of 2019, we were granted an exemption. That was the first time because it was so widespread. Uh, but this storm of May 21st, I, I would hope, would also was very widespread. The consideration would be given to okay. this as well. Um, at this time, I understand that there is no appetite for to grant an exemption, but um, you know a number of municipalities are passing very similar resolutions. So, so this will put in front of the minister yes. to consider. Yes. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, second by Councillor McPherson. Whereas Ontario Regulation 3804, standards under the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act, sets the municipal standards for emergency management programs in Ontario and requires municipalities to conduct an annual exercise with their emergency control group in order to evaluate the municipality's emergency response plan and procedures under Ontario Regulations 3804 S 12 6. And whereas Emergency Management Ontario previously granted municipalities exemption for an annual exercise requirement when the municipality experienced an actual emergency with documented proof of the municipality actively engaging their emergency management procedures and plan in response to the emergency. And whereas on August 15, 2021, the Chief Emergency Management Ontario issued a memo to community emergency management coordinators stating that effective immediately, the chief EMO would no longer be issuing exemptions to the Ontario Regulation 38004 requirements to conduct an annual exercise. And whereas municipalities experience a significant cost and burden to staff resources when faced with uh, the response to an actual emergency and activation of their emergency control group and or emergency operations center, and whereas a municipality response to an actual emergency is more effective than an exercise in evaluating its emergency response plan and procedures as mandated by Ontario 38004, and whereas planning, conducting and evaluating an emergency exercise requires significant time and effort for the community 
Emergency Management Coordinator and Municipal Emergency Control Group that is duplicated when the municipality experiences a real emergency. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Greater Madawaska hereby request the Province of Ontario to amend the Ontario Regulation 3804 under the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act to provide an exemption to the annual exercise requirement for municipalities that have activated their emergency control group and or emergency response plan in response to an actual emergency that year in recognition of the significant resources used to respond to the emergency and the effectiveness of such response and evaluate the municipality's emergency response plans and procedures. And that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the Premier of Ontario, local MPP, Minister of Municipal Affairs, Solicitor General, and all other municipalities of Ontario. Questions of Council? All in favour? That's carried. And next we have the building permit report. Uh, so uh, we're at $15,430 and that compares to 13, uh, $15,430,000 compared to uh, 13739000 last year. So we had questioned last month we were behind, and I think it was because we had, were without a CBO for a short period, and it looks like Erica was pretty busy in the month of May with 24 <laughs> permits issued for a total of $5 million. So I guess for the tax base, that's good news. 8062, uh, appointment of fence viewers. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson. The Council approves bylaw 37 2022 to appoint the fence viewers for the township. Um, Councillor Perry. Are there any qualifications that are related to this position or to this requirement? Special qual qualifications, Luke? No, or? I think, well, I mean, the, the legislation provides the scope which these fence viewers work within. So they are the, impar the impartial bodies that, that uh, enact the legislation. Okay, thanks. All in favor? Carried. Delegation of authority site plans. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson. The Council approves bylaw 40 2022 to delegate the approval of site plans and plans related to site plans to the Manager of Planning and Development. Luke, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, thank you. This is a, as it says in my report, a result of Bill 109. Uh, Bill 109 uh, came into effect in April of this year. Um, it, it came quickly. Um, the province um, was looking at under the More Homes for Everyone Act and it made changes to several bodies of legislation. One of the most significant is to the Planning Act. Um, and so this, this bylaw before Council today is a, it's a mandatory delegation of uh, authority to staff. Um, this wasn't, I'm not seeking this out, um, but, but, but site plan approval is now being handed down to staff uh, through Bill 109 and there's further changes uh, yet to come. So we need a resolution on this, but it's been mandated, correct? Yeah, I mean, interestingly enough, they could have actually wrote the bylaw themselves or put it in the legislation, yeah. but instead they, manded, they, mm -hmm. they handed it down, made it mandatory, and then let municipalities uh, figure out the, the rest of the process. So, Councillor Perry. So, so all the other municipalities that are having to do this, are they delegating it to the manager of planning and development or is it somebody else? Well, that, that's to each their own. Um, that was discussed here as a, a viable option, yep. uh, but it has to be um, delegated from a council authority to a staff authority. So in other municipalities, are they using the, the planner as their go-to person? Yeah, it just depends on, the, on, on each municipality's makeup. I don't have a full uh, poll of it, but um, it is a planning function, but it, it, it presumably um, you know, 
It, de it depends. Every every municipality has a different makeup. Okay, thanks, Lou. It certainly makes sense for this municipality because it's that position is most involved in it. So. Mm -hmm. Anything further? All in favor? That's carried. Um, moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson, that Council approves bylaw 41 20. 22, to enter into a development agreement in accordance with sections 5312 and 5126 of the Planning Act with Mr. and Mrs. Phillips and, Philip and Geraldine Lowe. Uh, Luke, would you like to speak to that one as well? Sure. It's just this is a um, it's a condition of granting a severance. So the Lowe's applied for uh, three severances uh, consecutively on uh, Lanark Road. And with the third one, there was potential uh, drainage issues that were noted. So uh, the uh, resolution from that, or the decision, I should say, from the county was that when this lot is to be developed, that a drainage plan be uh, um, created. And so one way of doing that is through a development agreement with the municipality and the property owners. Thank you. Questions of council? All in favor? That's carried. Inspector under Residential Tenancy Act. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, second by Councillor McPherson. Be it resolved the Council repeals bylaw 22 2018, which appoints an inspector for the purpose of enforcing prescribed maintenance standards contained in Ontario Regulation 51706 under the Residential Tenancy Act. Questions of Council? All in favor? Carried. And 8066 Madawaska Street is an information item. Luke, would you like to speak to that? Yep. Um, I think this might be maybe the reason some of the folks are in the room this evening. So staff have been looking at Madawaska Street um, since the spring. Uh, it was in, in um, early spring this year, I believe around April, where we expressed an intention to survey the street to confirm uh, a lot uh, owner property ownership. Um, and that has been completed. That survey was uh, presented before council at the May meeting. Uh, it was just shortly before the May meeting that that survey became available. Uh, following that meeting, uh, staff had an offer. We wanted to get it um, out to the public and these agendas I know serve as a communication tool for uh, information so we, we got it out in that May meeting. Since that time we've spoken to our insurance provider and uh, the township solicitor uh, just about what, what uh, effect that has on the municipality and um, so it does have some um, effect when it comes to the use of that land um, and as people are aware there is, there is docks that are, that are um, anchored to uh, to uh, the land along Madawaska Street. So there were conversations uh, that were had. Um, there's options moving forward. Um, so staff are gonna um, um, use now this opportunity and this information that we've had and the discussions that we have to, um, to uh, um, communicate the, the results of the survey and, and to um, provide some information to the property owners along that street. Um, there's not going to be, as noted in my report, there's not going to be any, any um, request from staff or to, to, to the property owners with the docks to remove them. Uh, but we're going to continue to look into this. It's, um, it's, we, we can confirm it's municipal land now. It's important waterfront land. Um, um, and, uh, and staff are looking forward to uh, further delving into this matter uh, for, the, for the, um, the best interests of the community and, and um, at large. Yeah. I think that's somewhat all I can say at this point in time. Thank you. Uh, Allison, would you like to uh, elaborate on that? So as Luke noted, this has been an ongoing issue for, or something that we've been looking at for a number of, uh, for a significant amount of time. Um, and it was noted in uh, reviews that we've had completed by consultants. Um, so this is just following up on that and ensuring that uh, we, we develop a plan to ensure that interest of the municipality is, that, is considered for all the repairs. And uh, I guess to uh, on that is uh, as well, I think when we went through our growth readiness uh, plan and uh, information came out in that, 
uh, that confirmed, I think, what had been discussed at this council table, that we should be looking at that waterfront area and seeing how that area should be developed in the future. So the idea is to move, that we discussed here was to move forward with that. Step one of it was to determine the ownership of the property and uh, we would move in, in looking at, at that. We most likely would be uh, retaining a consultant to assist us in that, but that's a budget item that would be coming forward uh, this year unless uh, Renee is able to find any money in any hidden pockets. Uh, so we'll be discussing that uh, you know, in the near future, and a plan would be formulated and a public process, we'd engage in a public process, correct, Luke? Correct, and so I just wanted to mention to council and, and for those in attendance, uh, I have received some comments, I believe council has received some comments, and I, I, you know, those are appreciated. Um, uh, my, my email for everybody is on the website, so I mean, I'm always uh, reachable, and please call or, or email as you wish. Uh, but there will be, um, with a project like this, uh, further public engagement, certainly. Okay, Councillor Perry. Okay, so is there going to be a notice for people to remove their docks by October the 1st and to not have their stuff on, on township property? Is yes, that, I believe that's what okay. I said. So I'm going to do... Um, okay, so I'm, I'm good with that. Yes. That's, that's good. So then the, the plan is that we'll have a plan for next year. Yeah, and, and I think the time is right. It's it's uh, not not to um, make any rash decisions, but now we have the summer to, um, you know, enjoy the beautiful water. Everybody has a wonderful, and like I said in my report, a safe summer. Um, we're going to reiterate that when we communicate with the uh, with the public along that area, and then uh, you know moving into the into the fall, and and we have that that time to start a project and into the winter, and and I think so. I think the timing okay, is good. So when are we planning on on, on putting out a, a public consultation? Is there a target date? For well, um, your we're, last paragraph. We're, your well, it de it depends on how best to proceed. If we have. Um, I mean, we can certain, there, there, there's a number of ways to proceed. Um, we can have, um, like we do in planning, we can have public meetings. We can have just, uh, you know, comments submitted. I can reach out, I can drop a public notice and we can publish that. I mean, th those work for public engagement as well. If we, um, and, and council supports moving forward with uh, consulting support that was mentioned, then that's another way to maybe maybe wait for that process to um, to unfold as well. So. I think we're going to look into this quite quickly and, and maybe form a, forge a path for how staff would like to proceed and we'll, we'll make recommendations for, for that. Okay, so, so further to that, um, we will be bringing back uh, something to July once we've determined if there's funding available and if there is, how to proceed and if there's not, how to proceed. Okay, my only concern is I don't want to land here again next year with the same situation because it's been all going on forever. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Eight or six, seven. No, oh, uh, no, it, it's fine. Actually, Councillor Perry touched on uh, on the item that I was going to raise, and and I just wanted to make it clear. Luke had said no one's going to be asked to remove their dock, um, but it's right this minute, and so the plan needs to be developed as he clearly articulated, and no rash decisions. A pro proper planning, proper process, so that when this is done, it's done correctly with no issues uh, coming out of it. Yeah. Uh, last question. Uh, no. Uh, for the public to engage, uh, are you there for comments and delegation no, or presentation? I understand. Uh, zoning, zoning bylaw amendment application. Yeah, it's just a memorandum to update council. We had a public meeting for a zoning amendment um, at our at our previous um, council meeting, and um, lots of good discussion in, ensued from that meeting. Uh, as a result, the applicant though has withdrawn their application. They're going to they're going to take a step back. They're going to re rethink uh, their proposal, maybe provide it with a little more uh, sturdy of a scope. And they may or may not um, come back at a later date with a new application. Should they come back with a new application, the process would start over with a public notice given. 
Uh, thank you. Any questions of council? Okay. Expanding public Wi-Fi internet access, Allison. Um, so I will turn this over to uh, the manager for planning and development in a moment. But in, earlier this year, I personally obtained uh, Starlink and discovered that. It, sorry, I personally discovered or obtained Starlink earlier this year and discovered that it's available in um, the Mattawatchin area as well as the Dacca Center. Um, we do have Wi-Fi hotspots in Calabogie area, but we've never been able to offer this in other locations previously. Um, so in light of an option being available, uh, I've asked that uh, the manager of planning and development uh, uh, contact these organizations to work together so that this can be an option that's available. It's not only for the benefit of the public or those who can't afford the uh, Wi-Fi at home, but there's also benefits for emergency management, um, especially in light of storms that have recently gone through that we as the township would also be able to benefit from it. So um, if uh, Luke, if you want to continue to add some additional information on discussions you've had with the group. Well, no, I couldn't, I couldn't add uh, much more to that. Um, I think it's a worthwhile cause. There is a financial, um, contribution that's required, but certainly these, speaking with these areas, it does seem like um, increased connectivity would be of great benefit. I'll read the resolution <coughs> and then open it up to questions. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, second by Councillor McPherson, the Council approves funding to implement Wi-Fi hotspots for public use at both the Mattawatchin Community Memorial Center and the DACA Community Center. Questions of Council? All in favor? Go oh, question. Actually, not, not a question, just a comment. Um, and I, I think it's important for everybody to to realize that even though um, most of us are, you know, in a, in a situation where we have ready access to uh, to the internet, um, there are still, you know, a large uh, portion of our population that does not either because they can't afford it or for whatever reason and uh, so it it's really good to see the municipality recognizing that and that it's something that should be available to all areas of the municipality um, you know not just to the select few so uh, really appreciate seeing this brought forward and sorry further to that there will also be a hotspot in Griffith that will be shared with the fire hall um, it was set up during the storm when uh, there was no power so people could go and charge their devices or to make calls. Um, so that was available and will continue to be available. Okay. All in favor of the resolution? Carried. And 9061 Renfrew County Clerks and Treasurers Association meeting is an information item. Is there anything that uh, Councillor Perrier. So at the very end, Allison, we talk about this can be taken to Council for approval. So it's a service level agreement. Will Council or staff have any input to the service level agreement? Uh, I believe you're referring to the County of Renfrew HR. Yeah. Um, so we're working with them right now. So uh, to see if we need to enter into an agreement or it can, or it can just be as a cost recovery for them. Okay. So there's seven hours free that they mentioned in their presentation, mm -hmm. um, but to see what level of service, we are using them on different uh, projects right now. We're working with um, our policy updates and looking at agreements as new employees come on. So we are looking at that and determining if a service level agreement is needed or if we're able to do as a, just as an as need basis. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anything further? And 9062, procedural bylaw. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson. Be it resolved that Council repeals bylaw 40 2021 and furthermore, Council approves bylaw 33 2022, being a bylaw for governing the calling, place, and proceedings of Council meetings. Questions of Council? We've been through this a few times, so uh, I think. But that's good. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. 
9063, Council Renumeration. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson. The Council approved bylaw 43-2022, being a bylaw to set rates for renumeration of members of Council for the term 2022 through 2026. And furthermore, the Council repeals bylaw 63-2018. Questions of Council? All in favor? Carried. Reserve and reserve uh, fund. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson. The Council approves policy 4-08 reserve and reserve fund as attached. Renee, you want to speak to that? Uh, so back in December of 2020, uh, Council adopted the first reserve and reserve fund policy. Um, to be able to uh, put us in a more, uh, I guess, uh, uh, allow for ongoing financial su sustainability. Um, the intent of this adjustment is to add a general operating contingency reserve. This is intended for things like this year where there's an increase in inflation and costs, um, allowing for a, a target and building a, a contingency reserve would allow um, for us to be prepared for such costs if it's over uh, the operating budget or the approved operating budget. Um, passing this tonight would allow us to, uh, to consider that as an option when um, allocating the surplus from the prior year. Questions of Council? Would the idea, Renee, be that if, uh, such as in a year like this, where fuel certainly is greater than we had anticipated when we did our budget, uh, we would draw down on this special one at that point? Um, what I what I would use it for is um, in a, more like a Q4, so we're heading off into the September as we're doing financial analysis and I'm reporting back to Council. I would have the ability to see overall uh, the impact on the budget. Uh, so it would it would include such things as increase in fuel uh, considered as the overall budget to seeing um, base, based on if there would be uh, funds available across the budgets to to make up for the increase. If not, then we would pull from the reserve and request this. From so council. more to try and hold it at the budgeting time so that if you had a, a target of 3% that you would be able to stay at three because you pulled some out of reserve. That is correct. Okay. So it's uh, it's it's pretty much to balance the budget uh, when there's uh, there's unforeseen uh, expenses. You would we would start by by trying to work within the budget, and then this would be the last reserve. But it would allow an option. Okay. Did I read the resolution? I'm going to read the resolution again because I'm not sure. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson. The Council approves policy 408 reserve and reserve fund as attached. All in favor? Carried. And travel expenses. Uh, do you want to speak to that first and then I'll. I do. Um, the travel expense, the attentive of. Uh, approving the attached policy is uh, solely intended on the kilometers per, uh, or the cost per kilometer uh, offered for um, employees using personal vehicle. Uh, so the current rate, which has, was set some time ago, is 50 cents. Um, the uh, norm, normally it's a, a reason, or a CRA offers a reasonable allowance rate, which is adjusted annually. So the intent is to adjust the policy to reflect this. Uh, increasing cost in fuel is driving this. Um, the 2022 rate is uh, 61 cents per kilometer. Uh, the, uh, and then the intent at this time is not to adjust fully the policy. We are doing a review of all policies. Uh, so if there's anything within the policy that should be reviewed, it will be reviewed at that time. Uh, this was intended mostly for the kilometers. Thank you. Councillor Perrier. Okay, so basically this applies to employees, and, right? What happens to the uh, committee, uh, the minor variance committee, or the committee of adjustments? Um, I believe I... Is there a p policy on, on that, or...? We, um, sorry if I may. Yeah, yeah, we have a procedural bylaw for the committee of adjustment that we started, if you recall, on, if you were at that meeting, to update in the spring. And then with the uh, staff changeover, we done the markup of that document, but um, 
So are you going to bring that forward to the committee, or is it go to council? Yeah, we've done, well. We it'll probably go back to the committee first. We've done a draft because we had a number of changes that were suggested on that. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Anything further? Moved by Councillor Rigglehouse, second by Councillor McPherson. The council approves policy 304 travel expenses as attached. All in favor? Carried. Asset management plan update, Renee. Uh, this memo is just to provide council with an update on the asset management plan. Um, we are at the end of reviewing the uh, asset management plan to meet the legislative requirements for 2022 and 2024 um, these will be coming to council um, I'll be setting up a special council meeting where we, we will have the consultant present the new asset management plan the plan will be uh, a it, it serves as a methodology to uh, planning for our assets and asset replacements um, once council has approved this plan uh, we will be able to develop a comprehensive um, plan, I'd say a 10-year plan on replacement for uh, uh, capital assets such as the roads and vehicles, buildings or whatnot. Um, so I just want to give you a heads up. Uh, we will be providing this this week within the next day or two. The plan will, uh, it will give you uh, approximately a week to review and, and come back with questions and comments at the, uh, at the special council meeting. At a special council meeting? Yes, that's correct. Okay, questions of council? Councilor Perry. Yes, that is correct. I would, I would provide to you a package. Um, the consultant is just closing it off. Uh, I'll be having it to you, uh, I'm assuming, tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Okay. And adventure. Uh, moved by Councilor Rigglehoff, second by Council Councilor McPherson. The Council approved bylaw 42 2022, being a bylaw to enter into an agreement with Ontario Infrastructure and Lands Corporation for a 10 year debenture in the amount of $2,035,000. And furthermore, Council directs the Mayor, CAO, Deputy Treasurer, and Treasurer, Deputy CAO to sign the agreement. Uh, do you want to speak to it? Uh, uh, yes. This is a debenture we uh, we entered into uh, mid 2021. So we were in a construction debenture where you uh, you pull as you require the funds. Um, we had planned for this uh, one to fulfill the financing for the unfinanced for 2020, uh, which the projects are listed here, and the other is for 2021 capital projects. Um, we have closed off the debenture, um, unfortunately, with the rate increases for interest. The interest is, um, is quite higher than expected. Um, we had uh, expected at the, the time of beginning the construction loan of a 2.07 2 interest rate, and we're at, a, I believe, a 4.47 interest rate. Uh, so we'll, there, there's an impact there. Um, the, uh, proceeding with this adventure, the first uh, debt payment will begin in January of 2023. So we will be able, or 2023. So we will be able to budget accordingly. Thank you. Um, so I did read the resolutions. Anything further from council? All in favor of the adventure? Carried. Six thirteen. Moved by Councillor Frost, seconded by Councillor Perrier. Be it resolved that the following minutes are approved by Council May 16th public hearing meeting, May 16th regular council meeting, May 22nd emergency council meeting, May 27th special council meeting. All in favor? Carried. There's a lot of specials there, Glenn. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Rigglehouse, seconded by Councillor McPherson. Uh, be it resolved, the council meeting of June 20th, 2022 at 6.36 p.m. Enter into closed session pursuant to section 239.2 of the municipal. I'm sorry, the federal funding of for rural communities. 14. 14. Oh, oh now I've got to start over. Federal funding of for rural communities. Information item. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, this is an information item. Did anyone have questions on that? It was part of the package. Seeing none, I'll read the resolution again. Moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson. Be it resolved the council meeting of June 20th, 2022 at 6.37 p.m. Enter into closed session pursuant to section 239 of the Municipal Act, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, volunteer appreciation awards. All in favor? Carried.
Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, moved by Councillor Riggelhoff, seconded by Councillor McPherson. The Council instructs the following as a result of closed meeting item. Personal matters about an identifiable individual, volunteer appreciation awards, proceed as directed. All in favour? Carried. Moved by Councillor Rigolau, seconded by Councillor McPherson, be resolved that the following bylaws 33 2022, 37 2022, 40 2022, 41 2022, 42 2022, 43 2022, be deemed read a second and final time and passed <coughs> by Council. And furthermore, that 38 2022 confirmatory be deemed read a first, second, and final time and passed by Council at the special meeting held June 20th, 2022. All in favour? Carried. Moved by Council Riggelhaus, second by Council McPherson. Be it resolved the regular Council meeting of June 20th, 2022 be adjourned at 6.55 p.m. All in favour? Carried.